And so at this point, we are going to figure out the return address at the end of our program and just find the offset in this video. Let's go ahead and just run this uh, call me program here. And if I just run it, you know, with call me, because if I type ls, we've got a binary here. Um, it's going to ask for something, and if I type it, obviously it just says thank you. So this is where our debugger comes in, gdb. And so I'm going to run gdb call me. And it's uh, read in what are called symbols. And those essentially translate out to different, I guess, method names, maybe. Uh, in order to run this in GDB basic function, just hit R to run the program now. And we can set breakpoints, and we can step through it, we can do all kinds of stuff. And we see the same thing that we just saw by running it. If I type some input, it's going to break out. It's going to say, OK, this program is finished. So I will start with the basics, and I think some of you that may be watching this that are in my class already know this, but it's good to cover the basics. So I forgot one thing. You're going to want to do a pip install path lib. That's going to be required. I'll throw some errors here if uh, you don't have that one in. I'm going to add that to the directions real quick. So the first thing that will clue us into the fact that this is a... ROP gadget challenge is if I run check sec against this call me executable, we're going to get the uh, security um, a security readout here. And we can see the no execute bit is enabled, so a straight buffer overflow uh, isn't going to work. Uh, the no canary found also indicates that this uh, might be susceptible to um, a ROP gadget exploit. So uh, if you're looking at a binary challenge and you see this and you see this, you might think to yourself, hmm, maybe I should investigate uh, for ROP gadgets. And again, let's start with the basics. So this Python line here, python-c, we're going to print the letter A 50 times and we're going to output it to a file called input.txt. And if I cat input.txt, you'll see it is a file that has the letter A 50 times. So let's go ahead and run our GDB uh, against call me. And we'll go ahead and do R for run, but we're going to use um, that input.txt as um, the, the input for the program. And if I hit enter, it's going to run, and we're going to see that we have a seg fault here. And so 50 A's was too much, right? So essentially, we provided more input than the program was able to handle, and we began overwriting um, memory locations. Now, one of the things that I had said earlier was this, and this is an interesting point with x64, so take this one into account. Uh, the rip pointer is the pointer to the next instruction to be executed. And that's what we're trying to get a hold of because we want to point this program somewhere else, right? We want to get that instruction moving to a location where we want the program to go. But if I look at this output here from uh, GDB with all those A's, we can see that the rip uh, register here, RIP, doesn't have a series of A's in it, right? It doesn't look like those A's overwrote RIP. But we do see it in RSP. And so uh, RSP is the top of the stack, right? And so that's what gets popped off um, for the next, if it's like a return instruction. And we see here that there are a series of A's at the top of the stack right now. Um, and so one of the things with x64 is this will not get placed into the uh, instruction pointer unless it's a valid like memory address. So if the program, if it's recognized that this is not something that's going to work, uh, we're not going to see it in the uh, RIP pointer. But RSP is kind of what we're looking for here to figure out... Um, you know, what would get put into our next instruction pointer. 
were were it to be valid. Um, so it's all A's. So we did overflow the program. And so the idea is to figure out, well, when did it overflow? So I'm going to go ahead and quit out of here. And because we put all A's into input.txt, and again, I know um, many of you are familiar with this concept that may be watching this, it's hard to say. I mean, did it overflow at this point? Did it overflow at this point? Did it overflow at this point? I mean, if I were to start writing a valid memory address, where would I want to do that? And if it's all A's, well, we don't know. So that's why we installed this GDB PETA uh, extension here, because it's got some tools that will help us do that. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going to run GDB, call me, and we're going to go ahead and do a pattern create. And I'll give it the number 100. And this is going to create a pattern of a hundred characters here that uh, are sort of unique in terms of, you know, what we're seeing. So we'll be able to identify which series here of letters got placed into that RSP register. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. And I just right clicked on that, so I don't want that there. Um, and let's go ahead and I'm going to run this with R and then in single quotes I'm going to paste that pattern in and that didn't do what I wanted I could probably just paste it right there for now that's fine I could create an input file too but we'll go ahead and uh, crash it and I'm not super happy with what just happened there so I'm just going to do that again real quick so gdb call me pattern create 100 i'm going to copy my pattern here i'm going to run it i'm going to paste my pattern into the input here we're going to overflow it we're going to get an output here, and we can see that uh, RSP contains this long string, right? So at what point did this happen? So I can take the first series of characters here, AA0, AAF, AA, which should be unique within this string. And I can do a pattern underscore offset. And I'm just going to paste in that series of strings, and it's now going to tell me that uh, this right here, okay, started at offset 40. So we now know that 41 characters will begin to overrun our buffer. And so I'm just going to keep some notes here, and I'm going to put that uh, offset 40 is where the segmentation fault begins. All right, so now that we know we have uh, a buffer overflow at uh, 40, we'll be able to figure out, okay, so what do we want that 41st character to be? How are we going to make this thing return somewhere that we want it to return? And you can see here that it is, in fact, a return instruction that we're dealing with. Okay, we'll do that in the next video.